The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to make this voice changer kit. With all of the projects we've made on the learning circuit so far, for the most part, we've designed our own circuits and made them on protoboard. But sometimes it can be really nice to just buy a kit. They've already figured out all of the connections for you. It's in a nice compact package and it comes with most of the parts, if not all of the parts you need. In the last episode, I talked about electric condenser mics. They use a piezoelectric diaphragm to change sound waves into electrical signals. Since they're small and sensitive, they're perfect for use in projects like this. This project also requires a dynamic speaker, but unfortunately it does not come with one. So you can either salvage one from a set of speakers you have lying around, or you can pick one up pretty cheap. One of the reasons I like these kits is they come with a circuit diagram, so you can compare it to the PCB and use it to understand how it works. Each Velamin kit comes with a set of instructions that tells you the order in which you should populate your board. Let's see where it tells us to start. Step one says to start with the resistors. This is a good practice because you want to start with your lowest profile parts. So let's solder on some resistors. I folded the leads of all of the resistors over to hold them in place and I was able to clip them and have them stay there and then solder them all, all at once. If we take a closer look at resistor 10 on the circuit diagram, we find a note. Looks like we can use this resistor placement to adjust the gain. If we leave this spot blank, the gain will equal 20. Putting the 1.2 kilo ohm resistor in place as instructed gives us a gain of 50. If we were to short the two pads together, we'd get a gain of 200. Shorting can be done by adding a zero ohm resistor or a spare piece of insulated wire. In step two, we place the diode in slot ZD1 on the PCB. If you look at the symbol, you'll notice it's a Zener diode. Remember when you place the diode, you wanna make sure that the cathode, the end with the line, matches up with the line on the symbol and the placement on the PCB. In step three, we place the four push buttons or tack switches. If you look closely at the symbol, you can see that it's a normally open push button. These four tack switches will go in SW2, SW3, SW4, and SW5. And you can see each is labeled with vibrato, pitch up or down, and robot for what they'll do when the circuit is complete. This project, like many others, use sockets instead of soldering the ICs directly in place. This way, if the chip becomes damaged, it can be easily replaced by just pulling it out of the socket rather than having to desolder all of those pins. Plus, desoldering all of those pins at once would require a lot of concentrated heat that could damage the rest of the board. When placing your sockets, mind where the notch is on the socket and on the PCB and make sure that they're lined up so that when you go to place your chips later, they're in the correct orientation. Since I'm right-handed, I find it easiest to start soldering in the upper left-hand corner and work my way down to the lower right-hand corner. In step five, we place the power switch. Now, there's no circuit symbol on the instructions, but we know that this is a single pull, double throw, on-off slide switch. Check out the traces. Remember, flipped in the opposite direction, it connects the two opposite pins. So flip this way, these two pins will be connected, and flip this way, these two pins would be connected, so no connection is made. See, soldering your components in order from lowest profile up makes it easier to solder. You can see that I'm no longer using the PCB clamp to solder my board. I have it placed directly on the table because I can press the components directly into the PCB so that all of the pins are perfectly through the board. In step six, we add our LEDs. Notice the diode symbol with two arrows pointing away diagonally. Now that's the LED symbol. Now these two tiny LEDs will be used as indicator lights for both power and modulation. Matching with the instructions, you wanna find LD1 and LD2 on the PCB. You also want to make sure that when you place your LEDs, you're placing the shorter cathode lead in the hole with the line on it. In step seven, we place the horizontal trimmer pot. 
Now remember, a trimmer pot is a variable resistor, so we're looking for RV1 on the board. This trim pot will control the sensitivity of the microphone. You'll probably need a small screwdriver to use it. In step eight, we place capacitors. If you look at the symbol on the instructions, you can see that these are non-polarized capacitors. So we need the four ceramic capacitors that come with the kit. They're all 100 nanofarads, marked 104. So we just need to place the four of these in C's one, two, three, and four on the PCB. Step nine is for our inputs and outputs. This kit comes with a nine volt battery snap, but it also comes with two pins that you can plug in to where the power input is going to be. I'm gonna end up using a power supply rather than a nine volt battery, so I'm gonna put the two pins in. Again, it doesn't come with a speaker, so you can solder in the two pins to connect them later. In step 10, we place our microphone. You're gonna to wanna to find mic one on the PCB. Looking at both the symbol and the placement on the board, we can see that there's a polarity. Luckily, the microphone comes with a small tab, so it can only be placed in one direction. In step 11, we place our second and taller set of capacitors. These are polarized electrolytic capacitors. Now, they're not all the same value, so make sure that you're placing all the correct values in the correct slots. We will be placing these in C5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Make sure that the longer lead goes in the hole next to the plus. You can also tell which side is the negative of the electrolytic capacitor by looking at the shorter lead or looking for the line on the side of the capacitor. In step 12, we add the last solderable component, the vertical trimmer pot. It's going to go over here and control the volume, and once it's in place, we'll need to insert the knob to be able to control the volume. This part is labeled RV2 for variable resistor. Step 13 says to add your speaker and your power supply. Now, since the kit didn't come with the speaker, I grabbed one I had left over from the previous episode. It's a four ohm speaker. I'll use alligator clip leads to clip into the terminals on the speaker and then to the post that we soldered on onto the PCB. I'm using my desktop power supply, so we'll just make sure that that's set to nine volts and be sure to plug positive to positive and negative to negative. The last thing to do is to plug in our IC chips. The smaller eight pin chip is an LM386N. If we look at the circuit diagram, we can see that this is an op amp. We'll get into how those work in an upcoming episode. The 16 pin chip, is an HT8950. It's the voice modulator chip. This is what makes our circuit really work. When plugging your chips into your socket, the leads are often out a little bit too far, so I like to press them flat against the table and roll them just a little bit to get those pins a little more perpendicular so that they slide into the sockets a little bit easier. When you place your chips, make sure the notches are on the correct sides. All right, let's test this thing out. Turn our power supply on. Turn our circuit on. Doesn't like feedback. All right, don't have your microphone face your speaker, otherwise you will get feedback. This is the vibrato setting. Let's see what happens if I turn the pitch up. Turn the pitch up. I sound creepy. How about, oh. oh. That changes the pitch too. Ooh, that's creepy. Creepy. This is my robot voice. Robotron 2000. All right, well, this project was pretty fun, but really it's just the beginning. You need to turn it into a project. Now, the first thing I would do is add some wires to the microphone so that you can have it disconnected from the board and so you can have it in a more comfortable position. But I would love to see you guys pick this kit up and see what you can do with it in a project. 
Post your videos, ideas, and blogs on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!